solving linear equations, which is perhaps the key skill for year 11 and then going into year 12. And solving is the process of finding the value of an unknown from an equation by rearranging it. An equation is linear if there's only one variable in it and that is to the power of 1. We can only use the technique in this video if the unknown is only to the power of 1. It needs to be an equation. There must be an equal sign. You cannot solve without an equation. Laying out your working is very important. Consistent layout leads to consistent working and far fewer errors. We do in separate steps. One step, two steps, three steps to give our answer. The work's done down the page, not across, because that means we don't write down the wrong value as we try to scan across the page. We do one step at a time so that we don't get confused about our own working on top of other working. And every step is an equation. That includes the answer. The answer is not minus 0 0.6. The answer is x is equal to minus 0 0.6. Each step works by removing a term or brackets or a fraction from the equation to make it simpler and get us closer to the answer. What we do to one side of the equation, we do to the other because it needs to stay equal. And when we multiply, divide or square, it must be to all of both sides of the equation. And that needs to be emphasised, all of both sides. Things are generally easier if we avoid negative unknowns, but there are often different ways of doing it, some slower, some harder, and I will just show you the quickest way. And that's this. We remove fractions by multiplying both sides by the denominator, the bottom of the fraction. We expand out any brackets. We check that our equation is linear, that is, unknowns only to the power of 1. If it is, we group all the unknowns on one side, we put all the number terms on the other side, and we divide or multiply out to give a final answer. Steps 3 and 4 are the key to linear solving. Unknown on one side, numbers on the other. So do some examples. I have an unknown and two number terms. So I group the numbers on the opposite side from the unknowns and then I divide out by my multiple to give x is 0.5, my answer. Another fairly simple one. This time I have two unknowns in purple and a number term in green. I'm going to group my unknowns away from the number now I have numbers on one side, unknown on the other, I divide through and I get my answer. Now, there's nothing wrong with having the unknowns on the right hand side of the equation, you don't have to have them on the left. Usually we turn it around when we write our answer. In this case, which is a fairly standard one for year 11, we have two unknown terms in purple, two numbered terms in green. What I'm going to do I'm going to group my unknowns on one side. Now I have chosen to take 6x off so that I have a positive unknown because life's usually easier if we stick to positive unknowns. That leaves minus 23 because it was the subtraction. The subtraction doesn't disappear. It's minus 23. Now we have two number terms so I must group them away from the unknowns. Add 3 to both sides. That gives 2x is equal to minus 20, divide 3 by 2, and I have my answer. When I have brackets, I multiply them out. Standard expansion. Now, I have two unknown, two number terms. I group the unknowns on the left, because that's the larger side. It means I group my numbers on the right, and I divide through. some slightly harder ones. In this case, all of the left hand side is being divided by 5, so we need to get rid of that. That means I need to multiply both sides by 5. But when I do that, I must do it to all of both sides. 
So this is all of this side, and in brackets to make sure I get all of that side. The left hand side cancels out, which is why we did it. The right hand side we have to expand the brackets. Now I have two unknowns and two number terms. I group the unknowns on one side, the number terms on the other, and divide through. slightly harder one, but in fact we do exactly the same thing. I need to multiply through by x plus 5 as a whole, all of both sides. So I do it again, I have to do it in brackets. All of both sides are multiplied by x plus 5. Cancels out on the left to leave me x plus 6, and I expand the brackets on the right. I group my number terms and my unknown terms on opposite sides and divide through. Here's some things to watch for and when you're doing these more difficult ones. Firstly, sometimes you might have two unknowns, but one of them might be negative. If that's the case, then we need to add it to remove it. Now, I add both sides 8x, that removes the minus 8x, and then I put the numbers the other side and divide through. If it's already negative, or we get to that at some stage, then I must divide through by the negative number to get rid of it. 34 divided by minus 8 is minus 4. However, if a fraction is not all of the side, still have to multiply out by 5, all of both sides. So the 5 multiplies into both the x over 5 and the 7 and equally onto the 3 on the other side. So I get plus 5 divided by 5 is 1, so it's 1x, one 35, I take away the 35 and I get x is minus 20. So there we have it. Each step approaches the answer by removing a term brackets or a fraction. What you do to one side, you must do to the other to keep it equal, and you must do it to all of both sides. Generally, it's much better if we avoid negatives, although it's not always possible. And the order of steps to make it easiest is removing fractions by multiplying both sides by the denominator, expanding any brackets, checking that our equation is linear because we need to use other techniques for quadratics, we group all the unknowns on one side, the number terms on the other, and we divide or multiply out to give a final answer.